thoughts. But for the time being, I'd like to spend a few minutes just explaining what Studio KT is. What is this project? Why are we here? And why are we in Quantong? We're getting these questions, and uh, you know, I, I love to talk about this. We're very passionate about this project. Um, firstly, uh, we're a social enterprise. This is not a money-making venture. Um, the business plan for this, I, I set, was to lose money, so I'm pretty sure I can achieve that <laughs> um, uh, quite easily. For grassroots Hong Kong creators, we're a free platform where uh, Hong Kong creators, and I'm using the term creators, not creative artists, or this, because I don't want to sort of connote one type of uh, creative artist or another. Any, anybody in Hong Kong who wishes to express themselves through creative arts, creative expression, um, subject to it being non-political and non-religious, you know, we're non-sectarian as a, as, a, as a project, is welcome to come here to exhibit their work for free. That's the, the essence of what we're doing. And we really want to target those thousands of young people embedded in Kowloon uh, localities, in Kowloon com communities. This is uh, here in the East Core building in the heart of Hong Kong, very unpretentious part of Hong Kong for a reason. We want to be accessible to young creatives. We want to be accessible and give them the opportunity to come along to show their work, to learn how to curate, and to learn some business skills, some entrepreneurial skills, because artists need, um, need to do that in order to be successful over time. We also uh, have designed Studio KT to be a platform for up and coming, undiscovered artists at pre-seed or seed stage, if, if we're using a venture capital um, kind of analogy, to meet potential funders, to meet philanthropists, to meet family officers, who at this point in time in Hong Kong are really only getting access to the elite. In the big installations, in the big platforms, and the elite artists, we think there's a huge opportunity to really pair up those people who want to invest in art for social good, the big families in Hong Kong, the family offices, with grassroots younger artists who are necessarily more contemporary in, in, uh, in the work that they create but reflect true Hong Kong culture, true Hong Kong history, through the eyes of uh, people who are envisioning a future and are seeing Hong Kong's uh, you know, thousands of years old culture in you know, through younger eyes and in a, in a different way. Our platform uh, is virtual, as well as being physical. This is a small space and it's, uh, it's, it's really deliberately up. Behind the screens that you see here, is a pretty sophisticated uh, cloud-based content management and delivery platform. So we can actually run this content anywhere uh, to 10 million people through live streaming or to 10 people sitting in our, in our humble space here. Uh, we're, we're building a community. So not really, this is an idea that's much bigger than, than any space. Uh, and uh, you know, so we have no, no real boundaries. And the idea is simple. The idea is that by catalyzing creative arts amongst Hong Kong's young people, although we're not only a platform for young artists, um, mature artists, experienced artists are welcome, but for young people, let's say, catalyzing that is an important step forward in terms of social and economic progress in Hong Kong. That creative arts through a non-political lens is a way to celebrate Hong Kong's culture, to envision Hong Kong's, Hong Kong's culture in the future across generations, and we think that that is extremely important. Uh, if we look at hard, cold economics, if we look at a country like South Korea, uh, South Korea has 3% of global cultural uh, contents uh, 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 exports, 58 billion people doing $10.5 billion in exports a year, exporting Korean culture. Hong Kong has all of the ingredients to do that successfully, harnessing the creative inspiration, energy, of its young people. Why are we in Kwantong? Because Kwantong is quintessential and essential Hong Kong. We're about to run a, a little uh, immersion for you now, which is audio and video. Uh, so enjoy this. Please uh, use the room. Uh, don't just look, don't just look uh, straight ahead. Use uh, the screens here and enjoy. We are in Kwantong.
工廠嘅。咁咧工廠度咧一到食飯時間咧，係多而家嘅十幾倍人嘅，係人頭湧湧嘅。咁我哋喺觀塘都扎根咗有五十年嘅，爸爸喺第一代工業區、觀塘工業區發展嘅時候咧，已經遷入咗嚟觀塘呢邊做一啲誒製造誒膠袋布嘅生意，咁然後慢慢轉型就去賣二姐啦。咁二姐嘅後觀塘咧都好多嘢拆廠嘅。咁當時夜班咧都係同期入行嘅多，多數都係後生仔嚟嘅。咁大家一齊做嘢咧，一齊捱咧，雖然辛苦，但係都好多樂趣嘅。咁就成日喺觀塘遇民方啊，食下宵夜啊，誒同埋又多人行，多嘢食，多嘢買。觀塘廣場咧係叫做舊式嘅商場為主啦。咁啊，好多鋪頭咧都係大眾化嘅。咁啊，例如有誒飲食啊。誒理髮啊，誒賣花啊，定用品都有。有啲客人都會講就係話啊，順便嚟下歐力㗎咁樣。咁所以我就覺得，誒、欸，即係觀塘都真係一個幾多姿多彩嘅地方。咁我揀觀塘區咧，係因為誒觀塘區誒人口好旺啊。咁我哋聽得聽話喺觀塘已經十七年啦，雖然搬過好幾次，但係都誒揀翻觀塘區。咁我哋好多熟客啦，咁有時有啲客人就做埋朋友啦。我哋都有開班，咁佢哋啊坐埋一齊，咁啊大家有一個聚腳點咯。如果你問我咧，觀塘嘅感覺咧，我會覺得好似德國嘅柏林啊，就係、是、嗰種誒亂中有序啦，好有創意啦，好有活力啦。就係話誒小學同中學啦，都係喺誒觀塘啦，同埋喺南邊度誒讀書嘅。咁所以咧，誒、呃、南田小巴站啦，就係、是、一個都係我成長嘅一個接觸地方。咁四十號嘅特色咧，就係佢會喺觀塘去荃灣，咁中間咧就會經過好多好多地方嘅喎。尤其係我坐上層巴士咧，其實我可以見到人生百態嘅。每一次誒翻學放學咧，我都會透過誒、呃、地鐵嘅車廂裏邊嘅誒車窗啦，探索出邊窗外嘅景色。由南田站開始啦，會見到誒觀塘嘅翠屏村啦，去到九龍灣站咧，就會望到咧誒牛頭角下村。聞住好香嘅牛腩味，咁一邊畫畫一邊傾偈，呢啲係一啲好珍貴嘅觀塘回憶。觀眾可以得到嘅，可能係從佢哋回憶同埋佢哋嘅腦海裏面延伸出嚟，係一個互動嘅思考空間。除咗想記錄一啲、呃、城市景觀外貌上嘅轉變之外咧，其實都想誒睇下點樣可以、呃、用一個詩意少少嘅形式，用相片去表達或者去記錄觀塘呢一區。因為觀塘好多嘢喺度發生，即係有好多藝術文化啊，有好多夾 f r i e 音樂嘅朋友啦，觀塘嘅人流都比較多啦。而我哋喺 APM 附近 bus 停咧，我希望佢哋可以。放鬆下下心情，唔好俾咁大壓力俾自己。大家都會可能同觀塘人都有個互動，咁就可以、啊、一齊去 enjoy 呢個 music，enjoy 呢個街頭音樂。以前睇到嘅係即係觀塘，我用咗翻工嘅節奏去睇觀塘。咁但係原來到我依家，我又覺得係一個充滿生活感嘅社區咯。喺我手上面呢三張嘅相咁啦，其實分別就喺咧、呃、大概啦係十年之間啦係去拍攝，咁啊可以見到咧當初咧就呢一個嘅。裕民坊咧就係一個嘅舊嘅社區嘅面貌，逐漸咧慢慢咧就變到咧今日咧而家有呢個嘅海匯嘅出現。細個嘅時候咧就住喺利園門啦，咁後屘咧咁我就去咗觀塘嗰邊住嘅。咁因為咧喺油塘嗰邊咧我就係讀小學啦，咁喺觀塘嗰度讀中學嘅，咁所以咧其實我係 hundred percent 嘅觀塘人嚟嘅。三樓處碼頭嗰邊咧就可能有啲新嘅高樓大廈，有啲私人屋苑啊之類。咁但係同時間，你原本咧都保留咗一啲可能自己比較舊有嘅嘢，保留翻原有一啲舊有你原本嗰啲面貌咁樣咯。誒，啲街坊鄰舍咧都好，就好互相幫助咯。譬如你有咩困難啊，佢都會誒幫你啦。一句説話講，以前係街坊，而家咧差唔多係真係姊妹嚟㗎啦。咁其實呢兩種形式咧，慢慢去改變咗觀塘啦。我哋相信可能過咗十年或者幾廿年之後咧，觀塘有一個新嘅面貌咯，就會成為一個觀塘商貿區，就脱離開可能一九五九年嗰陣時嘅觀塘工業區。希望喺個藝術上咧，可以有個突破，令到咧可以將呢一個過去嘅呢一個啊麥記，即係呢一個誒觀塘嘅元芳啦，帶到去未來嘅時候，仍然繼續保留住喺度咯。
Um, we've been running this uh, over the weekend. We had a tremendous launch. Uh, it's a small room, so we ran eight sessions on Saturday and Sunday, and we had some big sessions and some cosy sessions, but well and truly uh, over you know, 120 people uh, came to, to join us. And I just want to acknowledge uh, our team, Peter, Nye and his team, who all of the content you saw there captured by them in Quantum, photography, videography, all edited and, and presented and produced. So. <laughs> and, uh, Peter is a Quantum guy. Um, so uh, it's a real passion project for, for he and I. And he said to me at one point, um, I've discovered so much more about my district in meeting people and talking to local artists here. Most of the artists that have now joined us as Studio KT creators uh, either work out of Quantong or they have a story that starts in Quantong. Um, and as you saw in our little mini kind of immersive documentary uh, there, um, we're here for a reason because this is an unpretentious and un un non-prestigious place. And I mentioned earlier we want to be accessible and we want to encourage mostly shy young creatives to start to shine and explore. And whatever they're doing from illustrating to cosplay, we don't care. We want to encourage it. Uh, and we do firmly have a, have a big vision that Hong Kong uh, can be a contemporary creative arts, grassroots creative arts hub, akin to Berlin, akin to Tokyo, akin to Seoul in, in South Korea, akin to Shanghai. And that this, uh, this is a palpable opportunity for us, and we aim to catalyze that, and we're going to be relentless and passionate about it. So we're going to have a, a conversation now, and I'm really delighted to introduce um, uh, our guests. Firstly, uh, I'll introduce uh, Assistant Professor Brian Wong from Hong Kong University. <laughs> and later on, Brian will introduce our fabulous Studio KT creator and fabulous Hong Kong artist, Pure Hay, who's a cyberpunk illustrator. Stand up here, take it out. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time with Hay over the, the weekend, he's such a passionate guy. And what we're learning is, however these artists are imagining uh, Hong Kong, they're telling the story of Hong Kong. And mostly capturing some sort of history, he does it by envisioning a future that captures the history in the most beautiful and captivating way. Um, and you'll hear from him. Brian uh, Wong uh, is a, a graduate of Oxford University. He was a Rhodes Scholar uh, and has completed his PhD in philosophy um, with flying colours. He's uh, as young as he looks, uh, an incredible uh, Hong Kong uh, thinker, is uh, uh, written in many journals, uh, uh, diplomat, uh, diplomatic journals, uh, and uh, is, I think, giving all of us hope that moderate thinking, moderate thinking from young people is going to be a healing force for the world in bringing people together. And uh, we just love Brian for, for the force that he brings and the intellect that he brings to that through the eyes of a, of a young person, I think, this is extremely important. So Brian, welcome. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. And uh, Brian's now going to take over and uh, facilitate a, a conversation, share some thoughts. Our theme is catalyzing a vibrant grassroots youth arts and creative culture ecosystem, mouthful, a must for Hong Kong, a must in terms of Hong Kong's social and economic progress. And this, uh, uh, Brian's got a lot to, to share there. And I think then Brian will facilitate a conversation with Pure Hay, who will bring an artist's perspective to this. I should also say Pure Hay is Chairman of the Hong Kong Illustrators Association, so it really brings a, a broader perspective uh, from uh, the, the grassroots uh, creative arts segment. Brian, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Damien. It's an honour, a genuine pleasure, and uh, to have a friend like you invite me to, to come over here and share the joys of this wonderful space, this platform, and this opportunity for us all to embrace and reconnect with. The roots of what make us Hong Kongers, Kun Tongers, if you will. So I've been asked to sort of conduct an informal Q and A. So I'm going to keep this largely informal. If at any point in time you want to interrupt me, please do. Let's make it more combative and kinetic in that sense. Now I'm going to start with an obvious question. You know, David, you've had an incredible career as a financier, as a political activist in Australia, as 
you know, an advisor, and of course, in running some of the largest insurance companies and divisions of them in the world. Now, you're here in Kunton, and you've got Studio KT. What brought you to this particular space and this particular project? Hmm. Uh, as an outsider in, in Hong Kong, looking in, um, I, you know, you can bring a perspective that I think Hong Kong people um, miss in their everyday busy lives in terms of the greatness of the city and its own culture. I think as an outsider, that's why tourism is so great. When you visit a place, you know, you really see the power of its culture and, and, and what it brings and its art and its colour and its people through the eyes of a baby, almost, you know. Um, I find, uh, I've been travelling to Hong Kong since I was very, very young and, and, and now permanent resident and been living here for 13 years with my family. Um, uh, I find Hong Kong culture, uh, the urban, the changing, the rapidly changing urban landscape and the grittiness of Hong Kong and the inclusive, the inherent inclusiveness of this city because it's a port city but because it's a changing city, it's a trading city, it's an entrepreneurial city, it's a commercial city but it's also an ancient Chinese city, thousands of years of culture and I find the way that these things come together in a gritty, everyday way to be truly compelling. Um, I, I love this place more than any other place in the world, actually, because, and I find Kong Tong is the unvarnished um, truth of that. Kong Tong is the uncurated truth of that, of this menagerie of colour and movement and energy and entrepreneurialism. I also find Kong Tong, my wife and I, who, uh, Sandra and I, have, have uh, put this project together and we're funding it. Um, we find Kong Tong the place where we like to be because we're ordinary people. We find Kong Tong a place that is inclusive for anybody to get about their business, which is to live and to prosper and to make art or to make business or to, you know, make soup. I, I don't know, it, but <clears throat> Kong Tong is not central. Um, it's, it's so much better than that, actually, I, I've got to say, because it's, <laughs> it's quintessential Hong Kong. It's quintessential Hong Kong. So we're here doing this because we love Hong Kong. Um, we uh, love young people. I've worked with a lot of young people in my corporate career. Uh, Manulife, the company I, I have been working for, is based here. It has about 15,000 people um, based in Hong Kong across four locations. Uh, and we, we wanted to help. You know, we are beneficiaries of, of the richness of Hong Kong. It's been great to us and to our family. We're committed to the city for life. And uh, we want to put back. And focusing on young people and arts is something we find exciting and fulfilling. So that's it. Well, you know, if I may, I'd like to disagree with you on the claim that uh, Kun Tong is not central, because I certainly think it is central to our project to rediscovering what Hong Kong is. But. Uh, on that note, you know, when I was mentioning, because I've had the privilege of witnessing this project grow um, from its initial seeding and conception and sort of progress all the way through to this stage, and when I was talking about this idea with many of my friends, you know, most of them are incredibly receptive, but just to play devil's advocate, one or two of them would ask me this question. You talked about the grittiness and you talked about the sort of authenticity of street art. Um, some folks are worried, not me personally that by putting them and displaying the works in a studio with such wonderful design and decor that we inevitably would inadvertently sanitize them, we sort of you know, embourgeoisify them and mm. render them into something that it's not. Do you, have you ever thought about the implications of yeah. how we interact with the artistic you know, yeah. ecosystem here and the, yeah. where to situate this studio so yeah. that you could avoid that sort of, I suppose, um, neoliberal yeah. washing yeah. of the arts that we see out there? I mean, I mean, that's a great question and a statement, though. Th that is the reason why we're here in Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong uh, is a city that has tremendous, large, elite platforms for the arts. West Kowloon Cultural District is, is one of my favourite uh, artistic art, art districts in the world. I love M Plus Museum uh, more, than, more than I love the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan because it just feels more relevant to the way the world is today and the Asian-ness of the world, right? Um, and the centrality of Chinese culture, really, to the future of the world in the next hundred years, right? Um, 
uh, not to mention the Palace Museum uh, as well. So, um, but there is there is a problem because that alone. It, uh, is going to deny Hong Kong the opportunity to truly tap into and leverage the creativity of its young people. Right? It, the elite isn't necessarily um, their destination for a lot of these artists. What we notice in getting to know like Pure Hay and so many of, of uh, you know, his uh, contemporaries who, who are uh, creating all, all sorts of artistic expression here is they're all telling a story about Hong Kong and its history, and a positive story. They're celebrating it. And many of them are working hard for social good, working with disabled people, working with poor people, to, to bring um, the experience and the way they see Hong Kong in a colourful and reimagined way. Um, without an installation like this, and more of them, we hope more will come up now and follow us, we're not going to have a platform for those types of artists who are actually historians and are engaged with the urban, urban landscape every day. They're not you know, flying from one large gallery or museum to another. Um, uh, gives them the opportunity to contribute to Hong Kong's, uh, I think, cultural emergence as an epic city within China and as an epic city within Asia uh, and uh, as an epic global city, as a grassroots hub for, for contemporary art. So, what I found really interesting in your answer then, Damien, is you talked about the idea that art could be a form of history, right? That in creating art, we're also seeking to reimagine and uncover history. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Hong Kong's a city steeped in history. You know, we had our sort of fair share of the, uh, or maybe unfair share of the colonial era. We had the handover in 1997. We're now a part of China. And according to many, we've always been a part of China. That's obviously the case. How are we to make sense of, well, how do you personally make sense of Hong Kong's history and how have you um, sought to really capture this, if at all, through looking at the artworks and also the artistic history of Hong Kong? Well, uh, yeah, um, I, I think Hong, Hong Kong's uh, past, present and future is on display in a district like Lantong, post-industrial. Um, you know, this district was one of a few districts in Hong Kong that was extremely important in the era of the Asian Tigers, right? Um, and it's gentrifying and there's issues, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives around that. Um, uh, so, I'm not a, a student in, in, in Hong Kong or Chinese history, but what I do know is I see, it, I see a, a cross-section of it, if, if you will, an archaeological kind of dig of it here in Kuantong, and I really enjoy being exposed to that. And it's also contemporary and it's new. There's some young people here, and youngish people like Hay, who are really reimagining and taking art to new, to new uh, frontiers, right? Uh, and that's happening here, uh, where the history is kind of present and, and is seen as well as the, the evolution of, of the place. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I can proudly say I'm an Australian Republican. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing to say. Um, I know it was the King's birthday yesterday, but I didn't celebrate it, um, and, and I don't, I don't, um, and I don't uh, look down on anyone who did. Um, each to each to their own. But I think the one thing that really resonates for me in Hong Kong is that post-colonial evolution of the city, the post-colonial evolution of the city, and all of the growing pains and all the joy and. Um, uh, the re reunification with its sovereign uh, nation, uh, Ch uh, China, uh, is all is a sense of inevitability and importance. And I think um, the, the culture of the place is beyond my, my reckoning as someone who comes from a country that has a 5,000, uh, a 100,000 year history of culture, but really has got 200 years of contemporary culture. Um, uh, I. You know, I see the opportunity here for Hong Kong to re-emerge and prevail as a great city um, as it grasps its future. Uh, and I think art and artistic expression is one way. And you know, letting young people express themselves in a way that sees Hong Kong's past um, entwined with its future is very important for the, 
for the city's uh, progress so socially and economically. Uh, from we've talked about the youth, we've talked about Hong Kong, I want to talk a bit more about the grassroots, the sort of social economic dimensions at play here, right? Because ultimately, when we think about art and its role in social mobility, you know, which is something you touched upon just then, Damien, a core issue that lingers in the minds of many long-term Hong Kong residents is the question of youth social mobility, you know, uh, where we often see news reports, and in fact, I just read yesterday that there have been 23, um, Unfortunate immobility is a problem, housing shortages and accused of public housing. We don't need to go into that either. How can we tackle you know these inequalities in general? And what role does art play that sort of I suppose contributes towards your conviction and belief mm. in this studio and mm. the studio of KT, right? Yeah, I mean I wouldn't say that we have this naive uh, idea that we're gonna make the artists rich. Mm. Um, there was a concerted effort 25 to 30 years ago to invest in, to celebrate Korean culture to the extent that there was a massive public investment in, in developing Korean talent. And we know, we know K-pop, but it's, it goes well beyond that. You know, I lived in Korea for five years with my family and you can see the, the sort of, um, you, uh, the, the, the angst of young people for whatever reason that, you know, there's always yeah, angst in younger generations in any culture at any time. My generation had it, uh, this generation has it. Uh, in, what I noticed in Korea, th th that was channeled into this, this epic and uber creativity, which has is, which is made Korea uh, a massive exporter of its own culture and its soft power, if you like is extremely strong and I think this is an opportunity for Hong Kong. Actually we're missing something mm -hmm. because we, we, we have young people with, with you know the need to express themselves. Many of them now have more tools available to them to create art than at any time in history. And and a desire. And a lot of these folks are never and they're not you know they're, they're gonna live their lives and, and hopefully live them well but they're not going to become uh, billionaires. Um, uh, harnessing their uh, creative instincts and the palette that's available to them in urban landscapes like Hong Kong can lead to, I think, some reconciliation to the future and can lower um, uh, the collective uh, mental health and, 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 and you know, anxiousness of the generation. And the last question I'd like to ask you before we conclude this wonderful Q&A is just a preview, actually, an advertisement. So what can we look forward to from Studio KT after your wonderful launch, which, mind you, has been a wonderful success, folks. So for those of you watching online, you're not being here, means that you're missing out. But, um, you yeah, know, what's next to you guys? What's I certainly next? appreciate your support, Brian. Um, always. Uh, and advice, as always. So uh, business as usual for us will be to have our Studio KT creators who subscribe to our platform for free um, come along and run exhibitions. And we hope to discover more and find more. We've got now 20, uh, and you'll meet one uh, t uh, uh, shortly and, and have a conversation with him, um, Pure Hay. Uh, we hope to continue to build our uh, family of creators and our family of friends, which is you, people who come and want to listen and, and want to hear from us regularly. And we hope to build a community of angels, right? Angel investors. Mm. Um, and that's not everybody, but people who are prepared to do bigger things to support. Point, are we looking to be a prestigious, internationally renowned institution? We're looking to catalyze from the grassroots up, um, and you know, and, and to help Hong Kong become the next Korea. You know, the Hong Kong wave, whatever the Chinese equivalent to Hallyu is, right? Mm. It's something that I think can and should happen, um, um, uh, uh, growing out of districts like Hong Kong, but not just Hong Kong. Yeah you know, in so many different places. So there will be more workshops coming, we'll be featuring more artists, we'll be encouraging artists to run their own shows here, to learn how to curate, learn how to bring audiences, um, uh, meet investors, meet philanthropists, meet each other. Already, just in the last few days, we're having our artists, um, yeah, Hong Kong's got a place of silos, right? Our artists who, who come to Kong Tong, are based in Kong Tong, are meeting each other for the first time and agreeing ways to collaborate to make to make uh, new, uh, take their art in new directions. Folks, let's give it up for Damien.
Thank you very much. Um, next up, I've been told that I was due to provide a sort of, a, I quote, monologue, but uh, yeah, a personal sharing really on Kunton for around five minutes or so before introducing really the protagonist of today's show, besides you know, Damien, so jurat juratically, well, so and so forth. Anyway, um, on Kunton. You know, I, I, my, I have very fond memories of this district, or rather my first memory of this place was when I was six years old at a Chinese New Year celebration, and I was walking around Yu Gai, because that's actually where my uh, mum's family stayed, and still is staying. It's a very rustic part of the neighbourhood. It used to be known as a part where there were lots of, um, you know, relatively luxurious apartments, but now it's become the street where most of the cage homes and Kun Tong are apparently concentrated, so that goes to show how housing in Hong Kong remains a deeper melee and also problem that plagues our city. But long story short, you know, I enjoy those conversations I have with my relatives. They were Fujianese and I could barely understand a word of Fujianese, but I understood. I understood despite not speaking the language, because ultimately to me, the understanding came less from the words and the semiotics than from the tones, the gestures and the warmth. And that to me is a part of what makes Hong Kong special. But another shard of this fragmented trip down memory lane was when you know, I, I was offered a, a gig, a job, so to speak, as a columnist at one of the largest broadsheets in Hong Kong, Sun Bowl. And the headquarter of Sun Bowl is at uh, you know, this uh, Kyu Fuk Wang Chang, which is right around three blocks away from here as we speak. And I remember walking into that office with trepidation to be interviewed by the editor-in-chief only to be told by her after that conversation that I was due to write a column each and every week, you know, in a very large Chinese newspaper. And as someone who didn't write in Chinese for five out of my six IB subjects when I was here in Hong Kong doing the IB, it was certainly a daunting challenge. But I took it up nevertheless because I thought that I could indeed have a say. And whilst I was no more than just a 21-year-old, I did feel I deserved to have a say and how arrogant I was to think that I deserve to say, or for anyone to think they deserve to say in this city. And yet that's also ultimately a character that defines a lot of the printing presses, the media, the journalists who work in this neighborhood. Each and every one of them believes that they deserve a say because the people they write for and who read them deserve a say. And then my third and final memory um, that I want to share with you all with Kun Tong is when during COVID I was quite bored really, so I needed to to keep up my fitness, which was not doing very well, still isn't, by the way. But uh, in order to, to make myself a fitter person, I went for this ambitious undertaking of jogging along the Kun Tong promenade. And golly, golly, that promenade has really been transformed mm -hmm. over the years, right? Some would say it's been gentrified. Others would say it got the fountain head, you know, with this water fountain that's apparently quite exorbitant, you know, a lavish uh, display of extravagance and also fountains. But to me, I found peace and solace yeah. in the long strolls along the promenade, which took me not, you know, incidentally or coincidentally, perhaps to a certain company's building in uh, Kun Tong, you know, the company that I cannot name today, so I will not <laughs> name. But uh, it really did give us a lot of life, so many a life, uh, certainly, in that company. With all that said, you know, this is not just a series of incoherent ramblings about Kun Tong, because to me, Kun Tong is a microcosm that epitomizes what Hong Kong is. You've got all these large, um, not even bold brackets, but international investment banks and top MNCs, you know, stashed away, tucked away, uh, very neatly next to a promenade. You've also got places like Yu Man Fong, you know, and Yu Wa Gai, where many of my relatives and their friends and family grew up. You know, this, this sort of so-called lower middle, upper uh, sort of working class parts really of town that some would describe as seedy, but I would describe as lively and also vivacious. And then there are, of course, the industrial buildings in which we're currently housed and nested, and this studio is situated. That speak to the decades of history and decades of industrialization of this very city, gone but never forgotten. So Kun Tong is, in many ways, something like a place that captures a bit of everything in Hong Kong. And in turn, Hong Kong is a city that has a bit of everything in a world. We've got families of ethnic Indians who've spent more time here in their lives, and the parents have spent more time here in their lives than they ever have in India, because they are Hong Kongers. We've got Jewish families who've built empires of entertainment and food and recreation, uh, no less, for instance, in Wang Dokat Yun, which is you know, featured quite prominently in a movie called Sun Mei Yun Chao, which I would encourage you all to watch. You know, 
again, remarkable figures have contributed towards the entertainment scene, uh, bringing to Hong Kong these movie stars, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley in the 1950s, the glory halcyon days of Hong Kong. And finally, of course, there are friends and counterparts of ours that moved to Hong Kong from mainland China, whose writings and thoughts contributed to not just the media, but also literature, literature the intelligentsia, the academic and intellectual circles here in Hong Kong. You know, Jin Yong being one of the most noted figures of them all, he wrote uh, single-handedly the Wuxia novels that have come to define the lives and also the childhood of many. Uh, indeed, I count myself as one of the fortunate, you know, fortuitous beneficiaries from Jin Yong's writings. And whether it be Sen Yu Bing Hong Jun or San Liu Hap Lo, you know, these are all epics that are penned by folks who have settled here in this city right next to us, within 10 kilometers, 20, 20 kilometers from where we are today. And what does this mean? I don't know speak to the fact that Hong Kong's DNA is not just plurality, it's not just diversity, but also an innate sense of resilience and the abil ability to engage in bricolage, in mixing and matching, and ultimately identifying for, you know, paths forward, even if the future seems bleak, even if the future looks dark, even if there's no hope, we create hope by just living, breathing and doing. And that ties me into the final point today on art. To me, art and youth, you can't separate the two. Because for the youth to speak, it's already artwork, you know? Imagine getting your children to speak, right? I'm sure that's also an art form in and of itself. Maybe not in your case, but in many parents' cases it is. But also the words we hear from the youth, from children, from teenagers, adolescents, all the way through to young adults, the pure, the candid, the fact there's no disguise, no varnish, no polishing or embellishments and bells and whistles. It's raw. And that's what gives it its artistic oomph, mm -hmm. as opposed to the coloration, the attenuation, and all the moderation that we get when it grow up. You know? So seize the day, as Robin Williams remarked in Dead Poet Society. Ultimately, the future of Hong Kong lies with believing that we can and should speak up not just as members of the youth, but also as friends of the youth, as folks who engage with the youth and provide them with a platform and a space to grow and to harness their own strengths. And that is why I'm so happy and so honored to have been invited to speak here and to share with you all my personal reflections on Studio KT and Kun Tong. So thank you all very much. Yeah, 也是在座座都可以看到 Hello, hey, uh, thank you for attending today's event. My first question would be, uh, where does your inspiration come from? So my inspiration comes from my childhood. I've always loved anime or cartoons, stuff like Transformers or Gundam, etc. And that's why I drew a lot of a cyberpunk style of uh, drawings. Like 
So uh, people would say that the hallmark of the cyberpunk aesthetic is blending the real with the virtual, creating that unique style. It creates um, a special feeling where you're drawing uh, things off this reality, yet it feels out of the world. So when you're out there on the Hong Kong street in your daily life, what, do you, what catches your eye? What kind of observations do you make? And how do you incorporate these elements into your cyberpunk world? Um, 或者一些不同的地标在土包环的启明街其实是慢慢因为他们的发展 发展到一个境界就是说可能过多我预示他可能过多五六十年或者七十年一百年他会不会变成一个沙巴喷的一个城市呢他会现代化吗不断这样就是会变成一个有些部分可能是沙巴喷有些部分可能是仙喷这样但
咗喺建築物啊，或者以前存在嘅地標等等。我見到現在即係麥當勞啊、麥記啊、七仔啊。誒跟住好似有個淡仔嘅標誌啊，跟住土瓜環嗰書嗰個大樓仲喺度，我亦都見到未來，因為你嘅色彩啦，你嘅藝術風格啦，你嘅想像同埋嗰個空間感係好未來感嘅。咁對於你嚟講，你覺得時間同藝術之間係有咩關係 ？So、uh, in your work, I see that you have preserved a lot of these landmarks which are now non-existent. I see my, the McDonald's, Seven Eleven, t a m Zai Noodle Stores, and that old Tokan building, etc. But your aesthetic is also very futuristic. The color, the space,、uh, everything just just is very futuristic. So I wonder,、uh, what do you think of the relationship between space and time? Time and art. Because, 保留落嚟，咁啊，我自己覺得時間啊、顏色啊，或者各方面嘅嘢，其實係表達緊一種啊風格，同埋我對未來嘅嗰種嗰種設想，我覺得係 positive 嘅。我對於喺我心入邊嘅創作嗰個空間，即係大家都好啊，雖然啊，三分係啲好啊，俾人感覺應該係啲好霓虹燈啊，少危險啊，或者嗰種感覺，但係對我嚟講，我都可以好 harmony。咁啊 ，saturation 都可以比較高一啲，所以你見我畫嘅嘢個彩度都會比較高。咁啊，我自己覺得係誒、呃、可以可以並存嘅，大家都咁喺啊，只不過咧喺我個平行時空嘅心入邊係創造一個新嘅空間咁解，係啦。唔同嘅受眾、唔同嘅人睇呢個作品時候，會有比較唔同嘅感受，即係可以想象唔同嘅年齡層啊，或者種族背景啊，或者係佢哋自己嘅可能一啲意見、價值觀等等，都會影響到點樣同你嘅作品去互動。係係。但係即係喺你嘅判斷之中，作為作作家咧，可能有一樣嘢你會覺得好麻煩嘅。點解啲人睇嗰啲作品好似永遠都係 get 唔到你心入邊想講嘅樣嘢咧？你會唔會有覺得即係有時候啲受眾係好似曲解咗你嘅意思，或者唔係幾明白你嘅意思？咁喺面對呢咁嘅情況，你會點去應對或者處理 ？So、uh, in the previous answer, right? I'm trying to create this、uh, parallel space, right? This is not here anymore, and the colors and the styles, etc.、Um, In my envisioning of the future, it is still very positive. I know that the cyberpunk style is usually associated with ideas like danger, neon light. They give up that vibe. But、um, you can see that in my work, I think that these things can still exist in harmony. That's why the saturation of the colors in my work is still high. And I'm just trying to make these elements coexist in this new space I created. And then Brian's question: So different people from different backgrounds and different demographics may have a different interpretation on your work. So do you ever experience a situation where you think the audience just doesn't get it, or they have a mis misguided interpretation of your work? Ah, Brian, you asked a very good question. Because generally, many times, because sometimes the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making the artist feel that the artist is very good at making 咁好似好簡單，例如話觀塘咁，我會點解我會好中意呢個作品，或者我話我我係因為覺得呢度係我成日翻學小巴落車就係落呢個位㗎啦，係啦，因為落車唔該麥記有落，我係講呢一句嘅，跟住話小巴就得，咁樣佢又喺度落車咁樣，咁我喺度見證好多嘢㗎，但可能對其他人嚟講，點解要畫個麥記喺度嘅？觀塘唔係仲有第啲地方更加值得你講，觀塘街市已經係啦咁樣。咁可能佢哋會有唔同嘅 perspective， 可能會 challenge 咗添，甚至乎，咁話喂，你知唔知㗎？咁樣類似呢啲咁嘅嘢。咁但係放我嚟講，我最重要就係話唔同就係有個好處咯，就係、是、可以解釋翻俾佢聽，原來真係有真咯，係啦，真，冇錯，真實嘅嘢可以話俾佢唔同嘅 perspective。咁佢知道咗啦，啊係喎，原來嗰個人個最尾同佢傾翻我嘅 concept 之後，佢個佢話咧，我個仔原來。嗯都係讀緊呢啲學校，都係呢度落車喎。咁、嗯、佢就有翻一啲共鳴，共鳴啦，就知道啊，原來都係嘅咁樣。不過咧，呢刻我未必 agree 你咁樣，我有攞個 alignment 係啦。So that's a great question. This is actually quite common, Brian.、Um, so different people, because of how they grew up, they have a different perspective on things, and they may project what they want to see onto my work as well. Say, take this、uh, picture of the McDonald's in Kun Tong.、Uh, so this is actually where my school bus, the mini bus, drops me off, and I'll just、uh, tell the bus driver, "Oh, I want to get off at McDonald's," and he'll drop me off here. 
And uh, some people may look at this and ask me, why, why choose this location, right? Why not some other more significant space, say the Kuntong wet markets, and they would challenge me, and they would say things like, oh, don't you get uh, what you get, like the meaning behind all these spaces? And, um, but I think this is different perspectives is good. I can explain my perspective. I can explain why this is real for me. And um, I can explain my concept, where I'm coming from. And turns out, right, this person who, who told me that his son attends, uh, like go to the same school and is, is dropped off at the same location. And once he understands that, this location starts to resonate with him. So um, they, like, this, this is a good thing, I think. We could gradually align our perspectives. 接下來我會教會叫觀眾提問的但之前我想跟你玩一個單字遊戲基本上我會問一些我會問一些快問快答即是我會問一些問題接著你用單字或者單句答我們就可以快問快答說多一些好不好 So we will have Q&A with the audience next but now I'm going to play a keyword game with you a quick fire round of questions I'm going to ask you very simple questions I want you to give me one word answers Okay 對你講觀塘用一個字嚟形容係點形容啊 Describe Kuntong in one word 一個字一個中文一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一個一
So back to some long questions. A lot of young people in Hong Kong, they would say that oh, they don't really see a bright future ahead because of the lack of social mobility, high land prices, high housing prices, poor job prospects, etc. And they have lost confidence in the city. So either they turn to very fierce and vicious competition, or they just give up and stay at home. So um, what advice do you have for those people? How could they find happiness here? Um, Hungwatsi 一种怎样去抒发他的压力的一个活动就是去到这样对我来说可能是我觉得作为一次后生的艺术我觉得他们可以试试去外面去发展去外国看多一些不同的东西可能他们拿到看多一些不同的经验做多一些不同的东西咯
Sorry， 咁啊問題第一條就係問啦，嗱，即係有咁樣嘅 studio 梗係好好啦，但係你唔係日日都喺度噶嘛？咁我知道你係香港策劃師協會嘅會長啦，咁你哋響貴會嗰度會唔會有即係可以展示你嘅作品或者其他藝術家嘅作品嘅空間咧？嗯，誒係有嘅，咁因為其實啊呢、這個問題問得好好，因為除咗你話我哋協會咧，好多時都會同好多嘅唔同嘅商企合作啦，或者 NGO 啦。咁都希望咧，透過大家一齊聯動，可能去揾到一啲地方啦，一啲展示嘅地方啦，甚至乎咧 ，for artist 嚟講咧，咁佢哋印刷佢哋嘅作品嘅書籍啦，咁又可以寄存落嚟啊嘛，俾大家唔同嘅人認知。咁呢一樣嘢都係我哋向好多唔同嘅機構去會做一個合作。咁上次就係同一個叫做 Fuji Film， 係啦，咁就誒整咗一本 art book 咁樣。咁啊啊就～結果就好多 artist 都可以參與到其中，咁呢樣嘢都好重要嘅。咁其次就係、是、當然我哋有一個 website 可以俾佢哋展示到佢哋嘅作品，等啲商企可以喺個網站度睇到佢哋作品，從而揾佢哋合作咁樣嘅。Yes, that's a great question. Actually, our society works regularly with NGOs and businesses to display uh, the artist's work uh, in whatever space we can find. And we also sometimes offer like printed media, <coughs> so we could spread the word by uh, 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 by spreading, the, uh, spreading those publications. And for example, recently, we have collaborated and made an art book with the help of Fujifilm, yeah. and many artists' work were featured in that book. And of course, we have our website where we can show these various pieces made by our artists so that businesses could see their work and consider collaborating with them. Yeah. All right, um, any other questions? Feel, please feel free to chip. It doesn't have to be a question, you know. It could be got two. So this lady and then uh, this gentleman there on the third row in our tour there. Fourth row. So uh, uh, this is the first time I've seen cyberpunk illustrations. And my understanding of illustration is quite simple, like we all doodled on our notebooks as a child and wherever we can, and that counts as an illustration. But yours is different. It actually moves in a loop. It's kind of like you suspended a space in time. And my doodles are exclusively 2D, of course. Um, I, I think this is a good, I'm not sure what cyber vibe really is, but this cyberpunk type of illustration, it feels great. It, 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 I get the feeling that it's keeping me company. So I wonder um, how could, uh, as a member of the audience, how could we communicate further or interact further with your work? Mm-hmm. 誒、呃，即係你話講睇個一個展覽啊，睇個作品，有時未必係睇作品，係反而睇人與人之間個互動為主嘅。好多時咧，我帶個人去睇作品，佢睇完之後咧，好多時我係同佢傾一個偈嘅。反而嗰個偈就係最重要嘅，即係例如話，可能睇個幅畫，佢就令到 remind 緊佢以前同佢個個仔嘅一段關係，即係話啊，其實睇翻之後諗翻，因為佢個仔可能已經去咗外國讀書，跟住諗下諗下，唉、哎，總之就～可能改變主意啦，等佢留喺佢自己身邊啦。咁反而佢透過個作品，透過我同佢嘅溝通，而令到佢講出一啲心底話，疏導咗佢嘅一種心情
，我覺得對我嚟講係仲 enhance 咗一件事。即係未必一定係誒、呃、針針對嗰個作品，都係嗰個作品係另一樣嘢，可以分好多唔同嘅層面去去傾嗰個作品或者咩嘢作品。So, uh, 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 I, I could, uh, there are many levels here. I guess the first level, it's quite normal to not get it per se immediately. Um, it's quite common. Uh, there was an example where a, a person was reminded about his past through my work. I think uh, his or her son now studies abroad, but after seeing my work, uh, he or she decides to keep his, his, the son, child closer. And for me, I think my whole work, the whole experience is enhanced by the fact that a person is able to express themselves after uh, experiencing my work. So we'll take the question follow up from this lady and then the gentleman over there. And then if you have any more questions, please raise your hands whilst this lady is asking a follow up. Thank you. So what I want to ask is usually, right, when you create something, are you trying to put your, yourself into that work and ask people to interact with you, or are you post, proposing an open-ended question, luring people in to interact with you? Which is it? Uh, 知道誒觀塘呢個地標消失咗啦，咁我想我懷念佢，我有好多回憶。咁呢樣嘢當然會有啲部分會比較，我可以叫自私啦，即係話會自己建立好 personal 嘅嘢擺入去嘅。咁但係公家性嘅嘢都會有諗嘅，即係例如話，我覺得嗰個地方一定要描述得大家係要 understood 嗰個地方係觀塘購物記嘅地方。咁樣嗰度嘅人流啊，有紅色嘅 van 仔而唔係綠色嘅 van 仔，呢啲叫基基礎信息啦，我哋都會準確咁樣記錄落嚟。咁就係只不過入邊嘅密度啊、構圖嗰方面就會用我自己嘅想法去做。咁喺呢一方面就、呃、我自己覺得係呢一樣為先咯。咁跟住落嚟嘅咧，就反而係令到你好多驚喜，因為佢可能睇嘅方法唔一樣，可能覺得哇咁搞笑嘅，點解你畫墨記點解唔畫街市啊咁樣咁搞笑？咁你講嗰下嘢時候，突然間可能佢好感動，佢話啊係啊，我個仔就係成日都喺呢一度做腳嘅，我唔記得咗。但係呢幅畫你令我 remind 翻呢一樣嘢。咁但係呢樣嘢可能佢 out of 佢嘅想法嘅，有機會溝通咗之後，真係咁啦。嗯。So, uh, of course, the, the picture is very much done in my style. I decided uh, what the visual would be. I decided to pick Kun Tong as the location. And uh, I guess in that sense, uh, I'm reminiscing about my own past. So you can call it selfish or personal even. But I also think about um, the more public aspects of my work. Uh, for example, I chose the old McDonald's here, uh, here in Kun Tong. And some of the basic information here has to be correct. It's a red van, not a green one. It has to be that. And for the rest of the composition and the density, that's up to my discretion. And uh, secondly, after that, then you get more surprises, right? Like I've told, like the, in the story I've told, people ask me why McDonald's, why not the wet market? And um, then we got onto the story about his son, and he remembered that his son also uh, had spent many, many of his, much of his time here. And I guess my painting, my picture, served as a reminder to remind the gentleman of something that he has already forgotten, and that's great for me. Wonderful. So the gentleman over there. Hi, my name's Colin, nice to meet you. Um, I just want to pick up on an answer to one of your questions when you were asked about your parents and how supportive they were. And that straight to start with, they, they, you know, you said they weren't that supportive. I wanted to delve into that a little bit more. Uh, and and it's, I'll ask my follow-up question now in terms of you and your peers. Can parents and the generation above present as a barrier to young people uh, pursuing in creative, uh, uh, mm. cre creating creativity and the arts. Hey, I just said you asked the question about your parents. Do your parents support you in this field? Well, actually, they just want to ask you a little bit. You say your parents at the beginning didn't support you, but later they supported you. Do you think that this is 誒，譬如唔一定係你嘅，或者你嘅其他嘅青年藝術家都一樣啦。佢哋想去追求佢哋自己藝術嘅事業發展嘅時候，會唔會其實上老一輩反而係阻住咗佢哋咧？嗯，呢、這個問題都問得好，都幾切身嘅。嗯，因為呢度牽涉到我究竟我啊，其實父母都知道我自己都中意做 art 嘅嘢嘅
，但係去到做一啲好大嘅決定，例如話我將佢變成本科，即、就、係、是、一啲最主要嘅科目 major 啦嗰陣時候，咁佢哋都會有啲聲音，即係可能會唔會係真係、呃、不如不如即係、就是、讀啲好啲嘅啦咁樣，或者向某個方向啦，即係係啦，咁即係計數啊計好啲咁都得啦。咁、呃、但係我自己就好中意 art， 咁我就所以我就喺一段時間入面，我就透過比賽去證明自己 ，convince 佢，即係參加好多唔同嘅嘅插畫比賽啊，或者以前又冇咁複雜嘅繪畫比賽啊，因為我都有唔同嘅 period 噶嘛，咁就透過呢樣嘢去說服佢，咁直至到佢睇到個成績之後，咁佢就可能哦，咁你可以可以試下，我亦都阻你唔到啦，咁你已經咁有決心啦。So uh, this is a great question and near and dear to my heart, I must say. So my parents always knew that I loved art, but when it comes to choosing to major in art, that's a different story. And they would say things like, oh, maybe you could study something. You know, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, whilst they could stop you, and that's fortunate, uh, we, we will have to come to a stop of our event tonight. So uh, before we do so, though, I do want to take this opportunity to thank a couple of folks. Firstly, and the one and only Pure Hay. The studio KT team, including uh, Damien and of course Peter. <laughs> 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 <laughs>